No. <laughs> oh, oh for the better now. That. You smashed that. I've been nervous about actually, yeah, after Lily last week, I was a bit nervous about actually getting online live, so. Well, well, you know what, and Jordan Wiley on Monday, so I feel like you, you're a bit of an Instagram guru now. <laughs> I think I was just stressing about it so much that uh, I looked into it a little bit maybe before, so a bit, a bit of cheating. <laughs> your, your research has paid off, I'm pleased to see, but honestly, Holt, thank you so, so much for joining me, and... Um, yeah, I guess when I began Copper and Natter on Monday the 20th of April, I actually kicked things off with Hockey Royalty, G XGB and England captain Alex Danson Bennett. And I told you at the time that I had pinpointed you as my final guest, basically. And I didn't know when that was going to be, if I'm being honest. But nine weeks later, 18 episodes later... I'm absolutely buzzing and so honoured that you've agreed to be my final guest. Thank you so much. You are very welcome. Very welcome. Right. So are you ready for a bit of, I know you're going to get embarrassed by this, but I'm going to start with achievements um, for all my guests. So it'd be rude not to with someone that's had such an illustrious career in hockey to date. Um, so since making your international debut in February 2013, you have become the heart and soul of the Great Britain and England defence, um, I think it's fair to say. You have been ever-present. You've Up until this year, you've only missed one game, and that's for your sister's wedding. I mean, that's fair enough, but that is an unreal track record. Um, obviously, an Olympic and European gold medalist, including that famous decisive penalty shuffle in the Rio final, which still remains one of the best sporting celebrations I've ever seen in my life. I don't know how you managed to look that, make that look so photogenic and just great, um, but that's something else we can touch upon later. And just in general, like a central and pivotal part of what this country is all about in terms of hockey and fast becoming one of the best, if not in my opinion, the best defender in world hockey right now. So. For everyone, I'm honoured that we have got the legend that is Holly Pern Webb join me. Thank you so much, Hal, honestly. <laughs> You're welcome, Em. That was very uncomfortable, listening to all that. <laughs> very uncomfortable. Always, I can only imagine. It, it's, only, it's only just, it's very deserved, and yeah, I think you're brilliant. So I look forward to the next half an hour of nattering over a cup of tea or something else. Um, but yeah, so I kick off proceedings um, by finding out what everyone wants to know about my Papa and Natter guests and that's how they like their tea. Okay, so I'm going to do this by asking you five quick fire questions. Right. But don't worry, I've got it all covered. Okay. Okay? Everyone will understand where we're going with this, all right? Okay, yeah. question one. Breakfast tea, coffee or hot chocolate? Hot chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to be a letdown. <laughs> yeah, don't know. Holly Pernweb doesn't drink tea or coffee, but is a big hot cho chocolate drinker. Fine, no dramas. Question number two. What is your preferred food accompaniment with your hot chocolate? Oh, good question. Um, my husband's a massive biscuit fan, and so he will always have chocolate hobnobs there. So I think... They're the things that are in the house, so I'd probably have a chocolate hobnob. Or actually, actually, no, no, no. Cake. Cake's my favourite out of biscuits and everything. Piece of, a nice piece of cake. What, what cake are we talking? I mean, I'm very fond of a classic Victoria sponge. If it's buttercream, not cream, and a nice raspberry jam, I think I'd yeah. go for that. Okay, fair. All right, so a bit of cake with your hot chop, no problem. Yeah. Okay, question three. Bring in Tom into the, thi into the swing of things. Does your hot chocolate taste better when made by yourself or made by someone else, <laughs> i.e. your husband? Um, probably if it's made by Tom. Yeah, he does the proper, like, in a milk frother, yeah, full work. So I, I cheat a little bit. Um, so definitely Tom. I, I, think. I bet he goes to town. I bet he loves it. But, um, okay, fair. <laughs> Question four. What GB teammate are you most likely to make a cup of tea for? Probably none of them, because I don't actually make tea. Like, I would only make tea if there's people in doing some work. So if, like, plumbers in or 
a builder's in, then I make them a cup of tea. But apart from that, I rarely make tea. Sorry, guys. All right. You heard it here first. Molly Turn Webb, <laughs> it for herself. She doesn't make tea for anyone apart from the builders. All right, question <laughs> five. What GB teammate are you most likely to share a food accompaniment, whether that's cake or biscuits, with? Oh, good question. Well, it would be my roomie. My roomie changes quite a lot. Um, but I guess Maddie Hinch is partial to a nice treat at times and it, it definitely lifts her mood. So I think if if Maddie's struggling, then I would always share it with Maddie on a day to perk her up a little bit. Right, so you're sweet-talking MH1 herself with a biscuit or two. I think that's why. Yeah. I reckon she'd appreciate it, yeah. Okay, well, all very interesting. I mean, everyone's found out that you're not a tea drinker, but you love a hot chocolate, especially when it's made by Tom. So you learn something new every day, right? Yeah. <laughs> right, okay. So moving on, okay. So I pre-warned you that I asked all of my Papa and Natter guests three questions, all right? So to kick things off, I'm, um, I'm taking on board what Jordan Wiley wants to know about you okay and this caused a bit of a, a disagreement shall we say on monday's episode so we actually kick-started the episode very well we agreed on cream being first on a scone rather than jam okay but that yeah. soon into disagreement at the end of the natter when she wanted to know the question to you which is what is your thought of pineapple on a pizza so a Hawaiian pizza, I think the pineapple bit's fine. I'm just a bit of a, a snob when it comes to meat. So it, I've got to know that it's like good quality ham on there. Um, but I wouldn't, it wouldn't be a first pick, but I can eat it. Yeah, my mum's my pretty fussy with food. And I think a Hawaiian pizza is one of the only pizzas that she will eat. So I've been brought up on a few. I'm actually quite surprised because, I mean, I'm, I, I'm, a self-confessed Hawaiian lover. It's my go-to, love it, like couldn't, if, if there was only one thing that I had to eat for the rest of my life, a Hawaiian pizza would be up there. Jordan Wiley, on the other hand, absolutely hates it. But it's interesting when you say that it's not actually the pineapple that's the game changer, it's the ham. Yeah, yeah, oh, meat's yeah. not. I love ham, but it's gotta be like good ham. Fair, I mean, okay, so flipping things on their head, take the Hawaiian mm. things, what would be your pizza of choice? Ooh. Um, I normally, if I, if I was going to be really naughty and have, have a pizza from a well-known pizza place, I actually would go half and half oh. because I can't make a decision. So I'd right. normally go half a pepperoni and then half a veggie, veggie side. Yeah. yeah, I eat quite a lot of veggie meals. Um, yeah, so that's, that's what I would go for. Can never decide. I, I, think I like too many. I think that's fair. I think a uh, veggie pizza is a little bit underrated, in my opinion. I, I well, really enjoy the them. The salad is packed with pepperoni, so you're getting all your meat on that <laughs> side. I'll get you. And how good are you at sharing that with Tom? Is it very much, you're in it for yourself, oh, this is my pizza, yeah. not yours? Or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. If yeah. we've ordered it, that's my, that's my food. So you've ordered what you want, you have that, yeah. Very Ness and, yeah. and from him and Stacey. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, I mean, perfect. What more do you want? But okay. Very interesting. So actually the Hawaiian pizza, the thing that you care about most is not the pineapple, it's the ham. Very interesting. Wasn't expecting that answer. But um, anyway, I feel like that's enough pizza chat. And let's talk about what everyone wants to actually know about you. It's not the tea. It's the hockey. Okay. So um, since that famous night in Rio, and your heroics in the 2016 Olympic final, it's fair to say a lot has happened since then. Okay, so in 2017, at the European Championships where England won bronze, you won player of the tournament, out the whole tournament, all the teams, you were incredible. Um, the following year, you um, took over the GB in England captaincy from Alex Stanton Bennett. And in the following year, 2019, you successfully led the GB women's hockey team to uh, qualify for the Tokyo Olympic Games. Now, it's fair to say it's been very busy, very hectic. Um, but one thing that I always 
find from you, Hull, is that you lead by example every single day and you are very driven, you're so committed, you're dedicated, you are one of the most organised people that I know. And they're not only characteristics that I admire about yourself, but that I value in a captain. Now, as the GB and England hockey captain, I guess this is a hard question, but I'm interested to see what you think. What do you think makes a good captain in sport? Um, well, I've been very, very lucky in the fact that since I've been in the GB programme, I've played under two exceptional captains um, and, and exceptional in our own different ways. Um, and, but also complete legends of our game. So we had Kate, and Kate for the first four years, who I think, I think captain definition of it should just be Kate. Um, and then they also then had um, Al, obviously, this cycle for the first two years, who, again, led in a completely different way to Kate, but was such a talisman for us on the pitch, off the pitch, everything about her just embodied what we were about. Um, so I, I just feel very lucky I had those two. Um, I don't think at the time I ever thought about what the qualities about them that I admired. I just thought they're the captain and they're great at it and they completely fulfil the role. So I think it's only since, um, obviously, Al um, retiring and, and stepping down have I reflected on the qualities that they bought that I admire in a captain. Um, I think one of them is, is leading by example. Um, I think that's huge. I think as a captain, you've got to be willing to do it yourself. You can't ask people in your squad and your team to do it if you're not prepared to do it yourself. So I think that's huge. Um, and, how, and how they are on the pitch, I would say. Um, another thing I think is, <laughs> I guess, you sometimes got to learn to be okay with not being popular all the time. Um, because there's a lot of things that happen and it's completely, it's, there's so many things that you can't imagine. Um, and you've got to make decisions that you believe is in the best interest, I think, of the team. And that has definitely got to be the, the first thought. Um, and, then, and then I guess also you, you've got to really believe in and live by our values. And, you know, at, at, obviously at hockey, we have a, a strong system of what our vision is and what our values and what our behaviours are. And I think you've got to really embody and um, really believe in the process in every single one of those. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think it's actually that question when you sent it to me and, and past few months have done a lot of reflecting in terms of the qualities. And I by no means tick nowhere near all, all those boxes at all. But I think it's, it's just been good for me to, um, try and figure out what sort of leader I want to be. I, I can't be the same as Kate and I can't be the same as Al because they're completely different people. Um, but yeah, just trying to figure out um, where my strengths are and where my gaps are and, and where I can sort of um, uh, move myself up, I guess, and, and do some learning and reflecting. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, obviously. Um, I mean, obviously, it's, it's a, a godsend maybe that you you've played in the same teams as people like Kate and, and Alex, but actually for yourself, you, as you've touched upon, you really do epitomise everything that GB women's hockey team are about. And as I said, like every day you, you lead by example, you're the hardest worker, you, you, you're everything that, you know, all of us players need as that figurehead. Um, but you touched upon, obviously, over the last couple of months, it has been you know, a completely different challenge that you probably would never have been able to, to envisage happening. And how easy has that been as captain, considering we are, you know, all independently training, you know, on all, all you know, everywhere, all over the country, all um, isolating separately. How easy has that been as captain? Um, I think initially, obviously, with the Olympics going ahead, it was it was OK. And then as soon as that got postponed and, and we sort of saw that we were going to be home for long periods of time, um, then I probably initially <laughs> was feeling a little stressed in terms of how, as a group, as you said, everyone's dispersed everywhere. We've got girls in Scotland, um, right down the south, south coast and everywhere. Um, and it was how we can keep ourselves connected whilst being so far apart 
um, which has been a big challenge. And there's, there's been no blueprint before. It's as everyone keeps saying, the word at the moment is unprecedented, <laughs> which it has been. Um, but uh, working as well with the staff and and psychologists and the leadership group has been great to try and generate ideas of, of making sure as a squad we keep together. And I think one thing that is really impressed me, and I'm, it's no surprise, but every single member of our squad seems to be still so committed to now what we've got to achieve in another 12 months time. So the goalposts have just moved, but everyone's desire um, is still there. And actually I think speaking to quite a lot of the girls at various different points over these last 10, 11 weeks, um, if anything, they're even more determined. So it's been good to see people over, over the webcam um, and good to hear how people are doing. But I think everyone is really, really excited to get back to training, even though it won't be, it won't be the same. So um, yeah, it's been, it's been tough and challenging, um, but an experience that I've probably learned a lot from. Um, again, maybe once we're back to full-time training, I'll probably then reflect on this period and, and see what I possibly could have done better and what I might have missed and what, what went well. Um, and you guys will have to help me with that by giving me some feedback. Well, but to yes. be fair, it's been a huge learning curve for all of us, hasn't it? And, and as you said, you would never have been able to prepare yourself for this period of time. I mean, as you said, it is so unprecedented. And, um, but I guess, you know, as you said, the, the goal is still exactly the same for us as a, as a squad. And that is, you know, to, to continue to work hard day in, day out to ultimately retain that Olympic gold medal uh, next summer. And I guess that moves me on nicely in terms of what you have achieved in your career, obviously including that Olympic gold four years ago, the European gold, you've played for GB and England 189 times, which is outrageous. And I'm sure there's going to be plenty more caps um, in the bank for the next few years. But Amongst, obviously, all of your success that you've achieved on the hockey pitch is obviously been a long journey. These, these things don't happen overnight, as you can imagine, in the elite sport. But I want to know, in terms of your progress and your journey within the sport, who would you pinpoint as having had the biggest impact or influence on your career to date? So I was thinking about this, and I think by far the biggest would be my parents and they're not hockey players or not sports people at all. Like I've never even seen my, I've never seen my mum run. She can't swim like really on 40. Um, but they, they always instilled in me from when I was little that it didn't matter that I was a girl, I could do anything I wanted to do. And they put me into football and cricket and, and everything. And they always said that if I was willing to work hard enough, I could, I could do anything I wanted to do. And I, Den, I definitely didn't really believe them, um, but it, and I, I wasn't, and I still probably am not the most confident person, but it definitely gave me a work ethic and a mindset that I'm just not going to give up and I enjoy it and I'm going to go for it and I'm going to give it my all to achieve what I want to achieve. Um, so I think in terms of attitude and the mental side, which I think is the biggest thing in elite sport, I would say my parents, um, from a hockey point of view, I was really lucky that I grew up um, just on the outskirts of a small town in Derbyshire called Belper and, and my parents, I was at a small village school, there was 11 people in my year and they just took me down on a Sunday morning and I would just pick up a stick and start playing and I absolutely loved it. I think I loved it the most because it was both boys and girls. Um, you weren't separated, it was um, competitive and aggressive and fun. Um, and I just loved it from from day one. And I think the amount of volunteers at the mini hock on a Sunday morning that gave up their time, whether they were parents or just hockey players, um, to help us as youngsters obviously gave me the buzz and the love of hockey. So I would say them. And then also I had a really good junior coach at Bell Hockey Club as well um, called Tim Barlow, who... And he has coached a number of the girls in our squad and a number of the girls are now retired um, and had a huge influence in terms of nailing the basics in hockey. I'm definitely not one of the most skillful or talented hockey players and I never will be. Um, but learning the basics and learning the game of hockey um, gave me a huge 
love of the game and then I started to develop what sort of hockey player I was going to be and what my strengths were so I think there have been a number of coaches over over the time that um, influenced me but probably from a young age it was probably probably them it's interesting I mean I didn't know whether you would mention it but obviously you have in terms of uh, influence that Belka's had on you and it was a very similar conversation that I had with our GB teammate Anna Toman um, in well, I don't know what episode it was but early on in Cupra and Natter and she obviously was another product of the Belper junior system and for the club I bet to have seen so many um, of their you know their, their superstar young superstars go on to flourish and excel in our sport must be amazing for them but I guess I want to know in terms of like your parents you said obviously that they've had a big impact even though they didn't necessarily share the same love of sport that you had and how yeah. easy do you think it was for them to introduce you to not only hockey but a lot of different sports at such a young age was that important to them uh I think it was so important I'm really really lucky that my parents gave me and my sisters every opportunity um to do everything I think my mum when she had little girls wanted us to be ballerinas so we all went to ballet um oh. I definitely didn't enjoy it and it was probably one of the only things I haven't enjoyed um so gave that up pretty soon but played everything and, and loved everything and my dad was sporty growing up um but I I think it's partly from also where we live so when I was born we were we lived in in the center of Derby um and then when I was I think I was about six then my parents decided to move out to the countryside which gave us so much more opportunity I mean, we were outside the whole time playing anyway but the love of sport came quite early on and that is purely down to them giving me the opportunity by taking me to swimming and athletic I mean they were never in they were just packing each other taking one of us to one sport event and on Saturday I'd go from a football game to a hockey game um and then I'd play in the boys cricket team at school Um, so I definitely think they probably don't realize the impact that they've had by just giving me the opportunity um I know Anna went to the same school as me. We didn't have a hockey pitch at school. So it was it was not the opportunities we got from from going to school. It was definitely the opportunities our parents gave us by throwing us out there to sports clubs. So yeah, I'm very, very thankful that um that they did that and they gave up their lives pretty much for the first hour of any year. Driving us around the country I mean, to play sport. You you hear it, don't you? I mean, we we all are so fortunate to have, you know, such supportive parents whether they're interested in sport whether they're not whether they participate themselves whether they don't I mean parental involvement at such a young age throughout your childhood is huge and um, I guess you know the impact that they've had not only is yourself as a person but yourself as a hockey player I mean credit where credit's due they must be incredibly proud of the uh, individual that that you've developed into and and the hockey player that you you, you've become I mean credit where credit's due yeah but um no it's interesting and especially as I said without having the sporting background themselves which you don't necessarily hear often um from elite athletes so yeah all very interesting um but I'm very wary that uh I've asked you quite a lot of questions and as you can imagine I've been inundated with questions from social media so are you happy for me to fire away at you yeah, as long as they're not too difficult. <laughs> I'll pick some crackers for you. But um, Sarah on Instagram, I would quite like to know this one. Have you watched the Olympic final yet? Um, I got asked this at the start of lockdown. Um, I haven't watched it in full. So um, we've seen a lot of highlights and obviously seen the shuffles at the end like numerous times. But... Um, I've never watched the whole game from start to finish. And I know they played it, actually. Um, yeah. I think the, the Olympic played it halfway through the, the pandemic, but I think I was training at the time, so I missed it. But no, not watched it from start to finish yet. And I think it would be interesting, because I think, I, think how I can clearly remember moments in that game and how I felt and what I was thinking. Um, and I think it'd be interesting to see if what I felt... <laughs> is the same as, as what we could see on the TV, I think. Um, but yeah, one one day, I think I'll sit down and watch it. 
I'm not going to lie to you. I, I mean, have you watched the shuffles? Surely you've watched the shuffles. Yeah, they've been shown quite a few times, yeah. I mean, that photo, the famous photo of you jumping up and down, I'm not going to lie, I'm not embarrassed to say this, but when I was looking through um, Google images and your Instagram feed to try and find an image, all of these photos of your celebration after that decisive shuffle, it nearly made me cry. It was just amazing. And... Yeah, I can, I can imagine. I don't even know how to describe how you must have been feeling at that moment in time. And uh, I guess it would be really weird if you did watch it all back though, wouldn't it? Yeah, I mean, there have been things that have sort of popped up on Facebook, at the sort of highlights and, and videos. And, and watching them, I still cry now, like just watching everyone's faces oh. and remembering sort of what that squad over those four years had, had gone through to that point um but the yeah. celebration I mean as you know Emma I don't score any goals whatsoever um and so I don't have a go-to celebration um and so it was a, a very much uh I don't know what to do and sort of probably went back to being a child where you're really excited and you just jump around uh, all the time mm. but it was probably the highest I've ever done <laughs> I've honestly got goosebumps just thinking of it I'm not gonna lie like you see, you know, Maddie Hinch going to like slide on her knees after the European um, Championships in 2017, the year before. You, you look so elegant. So it's like you knew that the photos were going to go viral. That photo is honestly the best photo I've ever seen, I think. Best celebration, hands down, 100%. Love it. Um, Thanks. But Sarah, my next I goal. I'm here, so I apologise. Um, but yeah, so Cole hasn't watched it yet. She will watch it at some point to answer your question. Um, okay, Gemma on Instagram. Who is the best forward that you have played against in international hockey? Oh, gosh. Um, it's, quite, it's quite a few. Uh, I actually, I think Alex Danson in training is one of the hardest people to mark and defend. So I know she's not, She's not part of the opposition, but yeah, in training, she would be an absolute nightmare. Yeah. Just so tough, so strong, so quick, so skillful, just a nightmare. Um, so she would probably be right at the top. Uh, then you've got, then you've got loads of forwards. You've got um, Lida Vi Belton, obviously from Holland. Um, she's got a similar age to me. So we've done junior stuff at the age groups at the same time. So She's probably one of them um, up there. Gosh. Um, and then there's obviously Delphi, who's Argentinian forward, who I actually really enjoy. I quite enjoy playing against her. Um, that's a weird thing. I think I think I, I see forwards and I, I enjoy the competition. I enjoy the 1v1 battle that's going to come up um, in that game. But yeah, I probably least enjoyed the Alex Danson battle because I often yeah. came off. Enjoy. Um, you enjoy it because they're in your pocket. That's why. <laughs> like you, no. You no, 100%. Um, okay, time for one more, if that's all right. So, uh, okay, Emma on Instagram would like to know, if you weren't a professional hockey player, what would be your dream job and why? Good oh, good question. That is a good question. Cause actually, I don't know what I want to do after hockey. <laughs> So, um, something I need to think about. Um, do you know what? I think I would like to be like a Gokwan fashion person who goes out and buys people clothes. They say what they want. A stylist, basically. I'd, I think I'd like to be a stylist. Oh my God. Yeah. I mean, I have, no, I have no degree or background in fashion or textiles or anything like that. All of my creative school friends were far more creative and artistic than I, but um, I think I'd really enjoy that, yeah. I think you'd be fabulous. I mean, you've got cracking dress sense anyway. Also, I don't know whether you've seen, but Ryland Clark Neil has a new TV programme on BBC One, and I can so see you on that. Yeah, it's tonight. my street now. Yeah. Love it. Love shopping. So this could be this could be something that we explore. This is a couple and that are exclusive, isn't it, Hull? Well, it is. Yeah, yeah. I would, I would, I would love to be someone's personal shopper. That'd oh be great. God. Maybe not at the moment. <laughs> it's too many cues. If, if you, well, no, we'll avoid at the moment. Obviously, I, mean, yeah. I think people are crazy when they're going out right now. But if you ever need anyone to practice on or to, you know. You use as an example, I'm more than happy to give up my services, you know. 
Thanks, Em. Um, just quickly, though, you're talking about your fashion, but Lily Owsley has actually just commented. Mm. And I know, I saw, I'm trying to show my hoops. I mean, Lil, you're calling both of us chavs then, aren't you? Because we're both wearing hoops. Um, but anyway, I'm very wary that I said this was going to be 30 minutes. We could talk for hours, it's fair to say. Um, but as I said at the start, I honestly couldn't have asked for a better final cover and NASA guest hole. Thank you so, so much for joining me. You're very welcome, Em. Thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure, whether it's a cup of tea or a hot chocolate in hand. Um, I honestly couldn't have um, asked for a better guest to end this with. Um, but everyone else, I just want to take this time to say thank you very much for joining me over the last nine weeks. Um, I'm not going to lie, I didn't know how it was going to go. I didn't know whether it was going to be um, a bit of a flop, but I've thoroughly enjoyed the last nine weeks, um, you know, talking to some of these incredible, inspirational sportswomen like Hull that I admire so, so much and being able to celebrate all that's fantastic about women's sport. Um, so I guess I don't really know what the future will hold for Cuffer and Natter. We will soon find out, but for everyone thank you very much for joining us um keep that kettle boiled keep natter and using hashtag cover and natter and i guess i'll see you again very very soon and whole thank you so much again you're welcome cheers girl take care bye, yeah. bye.